is the Mid Morning Show at 97.5 Kemet FM. This is Christopher Martin and uh, Stephen Razor. Now then, uh, more young people than ever are considering getting into the tech industry, but many are unaware of all of their options. 80% of students say they know little or nothing about professional apprenticeships. Well, to help you to understand it more, with me in the studio is apprenticeships expert Ben Sweetman. Good morning. Morning, Christine. Good morning. And also an apprentice, Chris Stevens. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Christine. Good morning. Now then, Ben, what research? What does research tell us about school leavers' career opportunities? Yeah, indeed. So we, um, this time last year, we, we found only 5% of last year's A-level leavers went on to do apprenticeships, which seems like a tiny amount. Um, so we went out and did some research. We spoke to hundreds of young people, aged 16 to 18. And, and what surprised us is even though only 5% went to do apprenticeships, 74% of people we spoke to said they would consider them if only they had more information which was a real wake-up call, actually, for us, that, that it's, uh, young, uh, the school leaver group have a much more positive view, um, maybe, than we expect of apprenticeships. So it, it's about getting information into the schools and targeting school leavers? Absolutely. Yeah? And, and we, we recognise that the, the whole UCAS scheme and University Open Days, everybody understands it, and it's almost a, a treadmill that's easy to get on. Um, and so... Uh, you know, starting today, but from for our point of view, want to get out and help schools and uh, and their students understand a lot more about apprenticeships, because actually it's it's clearly an option that that people are interested in. Okay, so Chris, Chris, you are an apprentice. I am indeed. Um, how, how how old are you? Can I ask? Yes, I'm just well, 24 years old at the moment. You're 24. Yeah. Okay. So you left school. Did you know which direction you wanted to go into? Uh, when I first left school, I went through the standard routes that everyone in my school did of UCAS, personal statement, get it all put together and apply to my six universities. And I intended to study uh, law up in Sheffield originally. Yeah. And for- and- Go on. So where I went from there was I didn't quite get the grade that I needed for that uh, and decided that I didn't want to rush into another degree because I'd only been going down the UCAS route and for law because my parents had pushed me that way and my teachers had said that and that just seemed like the next logical step. So after that and not actually going to university, I took some time out to, to do some work in the hospitality industry and recruitment and quickly realised that I wanted to work in tech and I needed a qualification in order to do that. So I had the choice of either going back to university and going through UCAS by myself this time or going through an apprenticeship, which I'd never really been shown much about. And and testing it out first. Exactly. I think what's good about your your story is that, you know, the, the pathway is not always straight. You don't have to go a straight path, but you need to know, you need to be... C- confident in yourself to know that this is the path that you want to explore at this time is that right sure that's it it's all about the the passion that you have all employers they're looking for people with passion with with the fire to do and be in the job role that they're doing you know they can teach you the skills they can't teach you the will that's what you've got to bring so as soon as i knew technology was what i'd set on that's the career i wanted to do um i was a bit worried that i'd never done any gcses or a levels or any academic ict qualification uh, but that didn't stand against me at all i simply went to i called up qa uh, went for an interview with them the next day just brought my cv along and the rest is history i was offered a a few interviews the next week and was placed by the end of that week. So tell us, what does, what, how did you start then? What was the first thing that you did in your apprenticeship? So the very first thing that I had was, in terms of the process, was yeah. speaking to QA and getting placed. When I actually got into yeah. my job role, the very first part with, was uh, to spend five or six weeks just with, uh, just in the job doing the role, meeting the people, getting used to the working environment. After that first five or six weeks, you get sent off to do your first block of classroom training. So you get split into a few weeks of classroom training away from the office. Uh, Then you have home learning and coursework to do over the course of your apprenticeship. And your working day is at work with the company that you're placed with. 
And you're getting paid as well, aren't you? Claire? Yes, that's Yay! the main thing. You're making the money <laughs> rather than gaining the debt. And with so many friends that have gone to university, have now come out of university and cannot cannot even get an interview, let alone a job uh, with a degree on their CV is shocking. Um, it's very, it's one of the big things that scared me. And I'm very glad that not only now will I be coming out with a, with a qualification for my apprenticeship, but, you know, I've got no deficit at all. I'm firmly in the black. Yeah. And how long did your apprenticeship last? Uh, this one's a 13 month apprenticeship. So it's only a, a quick fire first year apprenticeship. Okay. Lovely. Um, uh, ben. Ben, um, are, are technology apprenticeships easy to get involved in? I mean, it certainly sounds like it from here into Claire. Yeah, and, that, and that's what we that's what we try and do is um, I, because apprenticeships are jobs first. So it's not about waiting twelve months for the next course to come along. It's about the fact that we have real vacancies with employers, and so it's often a very quick turnaround. And that's because we've got employers that got a skills gap they want they want young people into their business um, and so typically you know the kind of turnaround from applying to being offered a job might be only four to six weeks um, and for Chris it was even even quicker um, mm. and that's and that's what it's about for apprenticeships it needs to be it needs to be simple and we try and make it as easy as possible okay uh, Chris if you're talking directly to people who are leaving school say today uh, what would you say <laughs> I would say consider all the options. My my biggest uh, regret from my sixth form was that we weren't told enough about apprenticeships and what is on offer from them. They were always considered the backup option. You know, go through UCAS, try and get a pl uh, place in uni. If you don't do that, go through clearing, try and get a place in uni. And if you can't do that, then start researching apprenticeships. I don't think that's right. I think that the research for apprenticeships should be at the same time as your applications for university because you may very well find that the courses that you're studying at university, you're going to be learning things that aren't going to be relevant to the job role that you're in, especially if you're in the technology industry where university courses will be teaching you 1990s and early 2000s technologies that simply aren't used for development or websites anymore. It's all modern day technology and the best way to get access to that and learning that is through an apprenticeship because their syllabus moves with the times. Yeah. So you said it was a 13-month apprenticeship. Mm. What do you hope to do after that? So I'm, I've been lucky enough to be retained on by my company. I have a full-time job uh, for me, waiting for me for when I finish uh, my apprenticeship uh, in a few weeks. Um, and my intention at the moment is I'm currently looking at uh, the new courses offered by QA. QA will offer a level 4, 5 and 6 uh, apprenticeship that uh, at the end of the final level is equivalent to a degree. So I can actually get a degree part time while I'm earning well, money. You're earning money, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not a, a technical person myself, but what are you qualified to do then? Chris? So I'm my apprenticeship is in software and web development. A lot of people that just hear about technology lump it all together and indeed I did yeah. as well. I have a twin brother who is in the industry already and I thought I would be stepping on his toes if I came in and started learning something to do with the technology industry but in reality you know, there are so many varied job roles you have networking software and websites databases hardware it just depends on what you're interested in so broad exactly so broad. exactly it's not narrow and are you happy chris oh, i'm Yay! i'm ecstatic about it <laughs> Lovely. So, uh, Ben, where can our listeners go for more information about apprenticeships in, in IT and technology? Yeah, so we, we listen to our research. So we, we, um, we know that people have got all sorts of questions about apprenticeships. So we're, yeah. we've got live chat on our website, which we think is a great way just to ask whatever first question you've got. Um, that's qa.com forward slash apprenticeships. Or you can QA, get us on Twitter. Sorry, qa.com forward slash, forward slash apprenticeships. apprenticeships. And yeah. we've got live vacancies right now so if you want to talk to the team that's the best way to go about it live vacancies right now all the w's <coughs> qa.com forward slash apprenticeship apprenticeships expert ben sweetman thanks so very much and uh, chris stevens thanks a lot for sharing your journey with us and good luck with everything thank you very much thanks christy all right see you now Cheers. all right bye 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 bye, bye. bye, -bye.